see that sable eye coming out, but I mean, it is what it is here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I, I think, you know, from Marco's end, uh, the it's tricky, right? Because I think like Insane, Thunderous, Zacian all feel very consistent. And then the question is, do you really want to bring your Charizard into this matchup, basically, right? Because from Marco's end, he knows that Paul's Groudon has that Rock Slide, which turns into Max Rockfall. You know there's that Reggie Alecki on the other side as well. So Charizard, while it can take advantage of the Sun from Paul's end, is also very weak to a lot of Paul's Pokemon, especially that Groudon, which is such a strong Dynamax option from Paul's end. So it feels like we probably know which four Pokemon uh, Marco is going to opt for. I mean, I, I, I'd love to see him bring the Charizard. I think it's just really difficult to, to be honest. And it's like... Because if you don't Dynamax it, then it does significantly less damage, uh, and it's also outsped by a lot of things, and really threatened by that Leki. And if you do Dynamax it, well, you might just faint to a max Rockfall from Groudon. So that definitely feels more high variance. Really curious about the Gastron set as well. You know, Gastron does obviously suffer a lot against that Venusaur. And so from Paul's end, you know, I think Groudon, Venusaur, definitely staples. Incineroar is typically something you want to bring against that Zacian specifically as well. So we'll see how both players approach this matchup. But uh, eager to see which, you know, Pokemon Dynamax is from both players' end in this one. All right, and let's get into this match. I'm really interested to see what Paul leads here. I mean, as you said, the Charizard maybe not the best ring on Marco's side here. So Paul should be able to take a pretty good guess at what Marco's going to be bringing. Venusaur and Reggie Alecki coming out on Paul's side here. And then we see on Marco's side of the field, the Incineroar coming out led with that Thunderous. I like Paul's decision to not bring Groudon this time around, right? In the last game, we saw Aleki plus Groudon immediately, but Paul recognizes that Marco has that Incineroar, does not want to get intimidated. And so, you know, the Venusaur here is kind of uh, bait as well, right? Um, maybe baits out of Max Airstream from Marco's end. And as you see, Paul's actually going for the switch into Groudon. Now, you risk taking some damage, of course, on the Groudon, but uh, the Groudon is very, very bulky, as we've seen, and has that Citrus Berry, so it can take, you know, a couple attacks here and there. And so Paul's actually just opting for damage onto Thunderous, and I think this is actually a really smart game plan, because uh, the Thunderous on Marco's end, uh, we haven't seen its item yet, but it's not Life Orb, and Assault Vest is so common on Thunderous. Both of these players also have access to each other's team sheets, so, you know, Assault Vest Thunderous makes a lot of sense here. The idea is you just, you know, get a little chunk of damage off, and then you bring in the Groudon. The ma uh, Thunderous can't max guard in front of your Groudon, and then Groudon can just launch a Max Rock Fall into Thunderous if it doesn't take too much damage this turn. So, uh, I like Paul's kind of middle ground lead, where, you know, you're probably going to switch a Lucky or Venus around on turn one, but it's kind of dependent on what Marco leads with. Mm -hmm. Marco maxing that Thunderous right out of the gate here. The Incineroar with the fake out into the Grand Onslaught. Not really doing much since that was a swap this turn, and the Reggie Lucky does hit that Thunderbolt into the Thunderous, picking up a bit of chip damage. Thunderous returning the max airstream, sure enough, hitting into the ground on here and starting to get a little bit of speed on Marco's side of the field here. Yeah, so Groudon able to come in safely, Citrus Berry not activated, and looks like, yeah, Paul's just gonna opt for that Dynamax and try to get rid of the Thunderous immediately. The, the main question I have here is whether or not Rockfall alone is enough to pick up the KO onto Thunderous. Uh, I think Paul might be not 100% sure on that either, so to guarantee the KO, you can go for the double up. For Marco's end, I mean, you can go for, like, a Max Airstream and another Flare Blitz into Groudon, but to be honest, I'm not even sure that picks up the Knockout because the Groudon has the Citrus Berry. So, you know, Paul, using that first turn to... The, the tough thing about playing against uh, Sun in Series 8 is you always have to respect Sleep Powder from Venusaur on turn 1, right? So, Marco does not want to potentially lose to uh, turn 1 Sleep Powder because uh, if you Sleep Powder something that's Dynamaxing on turn 1, like, imagine if uh, Sleep Powder goes off into Thunderous, you're in such a tough spot. And so, uh, Paul says, okay, you have to respect the Sleep powder option i'm just gonna switch out and it definitely gets the better end out of this first turn gets that grout on it now you know typically you don't want to take that much damage from dynamax pokemon before getting it in but if you trade uh thunderous for you know 50 75 percent of damage on the ground on i think that's actually not a terrible trade on paul's end especially because uh, that venusaur in the back i think is actually very critical in this matchup for the late game hmm. reggie lucky another thunderbolt into the thunderous bringing it down below half thunderous firing off a max airstream picking up some chip on the ground on not really doing too much damage here and finally bringing it to the point where it can get some citrus berry recovery here so it's definitely going to be able to heal up but you know uh i, I think this is exactly i mean paul's crowd on has just been so bulky there's that flare blitz but yeah with that berry not able to pick up the knockdown so uh, in the end, Paul essentially gets an extra turn of Dynamax here, and I think that's a big advantage just in terms of having something that's bulky that's around. 
More importantly, you knock out that Thunderous, and this Venusaur set is very hyper-offensive. With Thunderous out of the way, Venusaur now can put in a lot more work, doesn't have to worry about just getting, you know, one hit KO to buy a Dynamax Thunderous. 100%. This is, I mean, the speed boost that that Thunderous was going for, unfortunately, losing all the speed control, which means Paul as well, if he wants to, can start trying to get some of the speed control back on his side of the field here with that Regieleki. Obviously, you don't really want to hit an Electro Web into that Thunderous with the Defiant, but is now free to either just attack with this Regieleki or be going for those Electro Webs. On Marco's side of the field, that Zacian is making an appearance, getting a little bit of an attack boost here with the intended sword, but with that max ground on still on <laughs> Paul's side of the field here, doesn't seem very safe. Yeah, and even, you know, after your Groudon's Dynamax, right, you, uh, Groudon, ground type attacks, both super effective against the uh, Zacian and the Incineroar here, so, uh, you know, Paul just double checking the stats of everything and is opting for uh, launching that Electro Web off immediately. You know, Electro Web has been so good for Paul, and I think he's definitely in a solid position right now to just keep using a couple of those. And so, uh, Zacian is going to protect. I think that's smart because you don't want to get hit by multiple Electro Webs, right? And you don't want the Groudon to be able to outspeed you. Uh, Paul actually opted for the protect here because he doesn't want to faint to something like a Behemoth Blade. Uh, and that likely indicates that the Groudon doesn't have that much speed investment. We've seen how bulky it is, so I, I think you're probably going to need two Electro Webs to actually be able to uh, outspeed the Zacian with Groudon specifically. So, uh, I like the protect play from both players' ends here, but in the end, I think Marco gets a little bit ahead with his protect. Yeah, the Flare Blitz trying to attack into the ground on to try and pick up that KO here, but unfortunately with that max guard, nothing happening from the Incineroar. The Sand Chip, though, is going to bring it down to half low health, so there is going to be some of that recovery back with this Citrus Berry. And looks like here that Paul might just go for the the switch and another Electro Web to try and get some speed control. Yeah, it's not every day you see someone try to switch their Dynamax Pokemon out, but I actually think it makes a lot of sense in this matchup specifically because you want to conserve that Groudon. You want to get the Sun up for Venusaur in this endgame. That Venusaur has a very offensive moveset. I believe it actually has that Weather Ball, so it can hit that Zacian for super effective damage in the Sun. Uh, and so with no Weather Control from Marco Zen, I think the switch actually makes a lot of sense because uh, Paul recognizes, hey, if I get a single speed drop onto the uh, Zacian, it'll still outspeed and actually pick up the KO onto Groudon. So I definitely think that is the correct play in this position is so important to reset that weather. Uh, Charizards are not really that essential in this late game as well, and Aleki is able to get that Electro Web off, which is going to grant him a lot of speed control going off towards the end of this match. 100% here. Then Zacian is going to hit the Hemoth Blade into the Charizard, I would assume, and yes, be doing a good chunk of damage here. I mean... Preserving that ground, like you said, absolutely huge. The parting shot coming out from the Zacian, going to be dropping the special attack of this Reggie Aleki, and Marco opting to reposition a little bit um, and bring out his last Pokemon here, which we haven't quite seen, which will be that Gastrodon. I think Gastron definitely keeps Marco in this. If it was uh, Charizard coming in from his end, you know, we were talking about whether or not maybe he'd bring Charizard before this matchup, but uh, I, it feels really, really tough to come back, right? Because Aleki just does really well. But uh, Gastron definitely the best Pokemon for Marco to have right now, and I'm really curious about its set. Uh, I think the way that Paul wins this game is basically through that... Venusaur. So you need to position Venusaur out in the right spot, get it in, uh, get that sun up, and then put on pressure with its damage, right? Because Paul actually has very little damage against this uh, Gastron otherwise, but of course Venusaur can just one-shot it with the Grass-type attack, especially because we've seen already that it's not a Rindo Berry on the Gastrodon. So Paul has the numbers advantage, and he's got some speed control here as well. I think like he basically needs to get the Venusaur in, in a safe spot and be able to just try to pick up like, KO after KO after KO with it. Because I think, given that I believe it has that Weather Ball, uh, you know, it can actually probably just one-shot that Zacian and that Groud uh, or the Gastron. Uh, and so I like the switch out here by Paul. He recognizes, hey, you know, Groudon, able to reset the weather here, and there's a chance that maybe the Zacian protects as well, so you get the Groudon in for free. Uh, Zacian actually ends up going for the switch, but I think, you know, Paul able to get that sun in safely. Mm -hmm. With this reposition, there is going to be takeout pressure on Marco's side of the field, and of course the attack drop going into this ground on the charizard here just going for a heat wave gives some damage does like a good amount of damage down to this gastron with that solar power ability and his skull coming out is going to pick up the ko on this charizard here 
So, you know, solid trade-off for both players here, but Paul actually gets a huge heat wave off before his Pokemon faints, and that's actually really nice, right? The Sproudon is so low now, it will faint certainly from any attack, and there's that free switch into Venusaur that I was talking about. Paul didn't risk switching it in, uh, you know, even sacrifice the Pokemon to get it in safely, and Venusaur is looking really, really solid right now, so... Paul definitely in a pretty commanding spot right now. He has a lot of options right now, right? Uh, I think on one hand, you read the fake out from Marco's end. Uh, you also have to worry, like, you know, like one option is not targeting the Incineroar at all, but that's a little bit risky because then Incineroar pressures with something like a Flare Blitz, right? So looks like Incineroar is just going to offer the fake out. Paul is just opting for damage with both of the Pokemon, so uh, Venusaur won't get the attack off, but that's Precipice Blaze connects with both, and that's a lot of damage. The Gastron taking a big hit here. Gastron, sometimes a little tricky to take out, but has been taking a lot of damage from the two oh. hits. Is going to go for that yawn into the Venusaur. Get a little bit of recovery as well. And this Venusaur, I mean, this Venusaur can take on this Gastron, but also, if you're Marco, do you really want to risk keeping the Venusaur in and having it fall asleep here? Yeah, that's a big yawn. I was curious on, you know, what the Gastron set would be here in the end for Marco. And yawn is actually a game changer here, right? So here, here's the situation. Now with Marco, you can just double protect both of your Pokemon this turn, right? Uh, and then Venusaur will fall asleep. So Paul, as a response to that, as you see, wants to switch out into that Regieleki. Now, if you're Marco, you can make a big play and say, there's no way Paul's gonna stay in here, because if he stays in, I could've just double protected. You could read into that Regieleki switching in and go for an attack onto that slot. So if this turn if paul makes the correct play this turn it really feels like he should win the game with venusaur if marco is able to maybe read into the switch out that paul's considering though and call it correctly uh, marco still keeps himself in this game so let's see this is really critical whether or not the gastron mizashin will just opt to uh, go for the protects here because uh, if not then you know paul had an opportunity to just outright win the game with either a grass type attack and a gastron or that weather ball into the zashian right the reggie lucky swapping in here so interested to see how this plays out. Oh, the protect, no protect coming from out from and Zashian hitting into the ground on here. And the Gastronon opting <laughs> for that earth power, big earth power into this Reggie Aleki and picking up this KO here. Yeah, so Marco didn't offer the protects, was able to predict uh, the switch outs on Paul's end. So this is going to be a really interesting finish in the game. I, I mentioned to, I wanted to say this earlier, Groudon, the turn it went for Precipice Blades and KO'd Incineroar, had the opportunity to actually go for a Swords Dance there. I was thinking Paul maybe didn't want to risk the Swords Dance in case Marco went for like the very rare play of switching the Incineroar out into Zacian, uh, and then just let Zacian come in for free. So, I mean, Paul's Venusaur can definitely win in this scenario. It's just a question of who do you target and do you make the right target here, right? Uh, can you read into who Marco is going to protect this turn? Uh, because if me, 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 Marco now, having not protected last turn, can protect either of his Pokemon, you either get that Yawn off into Venusaur once again, or that uh, Behemoth Blade into the Venusaur as well from Zacian. So, you know, Paul has to make the right target selection here. If Marco is able to predict that and call it correctly, uh, gives him a huge advantage. So, yeah, you know, Paul definitely had an early lead here, but Marco making really good plays in back-to-back -back turns to keep himself in this one. And, you know, Venusaur looks really good here in this endgame, but it, it can only target one Pokemon at a time. It's going to be the protect from Zacian. Oh! Okay, now just see where everything is targeting into. Targeting into the Zacian slot here. And Groudon does go for that sword stance, raising the attack stat by two, definitely applying a little bit of pressure here. The Gastrodon will hit the Earth Power into it, though. The sword stance oh. isn't going to do anything. Gastrodon picking up yet another KO here. And it's just this force to be reckoned with. I mean, it's picking up all these KOs with these Earth Powers. It's getting this leftovers recovery slowly but surely. And I mean, this Venusaur can put such pressure on this Gastrodon, but... Marco's done a really good job of kind of isolating it down, so Paul really has to pick what he goes after here. Yeah, Zacian goes for the double protect, assuming that Venusaur is going to target that slot, which I think is a good play. There is that Weather Ball we've been talking about this entire time, finally coming out uh, from the sun, able to pick up that one hit KO. That's a really big tech that Venusaur's are running nowadays. And we know the Gastron has Yawn, we know it has Protect, so it'll probably go for Yawn here, Protect sure next enough. turn. And then it's going to come down to sleep turns, I think, Sierra. So we'll see if the Venusaur can wake up fast enough, and this is going to be a really, really wild endgame. And it's, I mean, Marco bringing this back as best as he can. The fact that it's coming down to sleep, I mean, a Gastrodon versus a Venusaur, you, sometimes you just see that, 
<laughs> the Venusaur being able to hit that four time effective grass move against the Gastron. I think it's over, but this Gastrodon doing everything it can to really bring out this end game and the fact that this Venusaur is going to sleep, I mean, I think it really depends, like you said, on the sleep turns as well as how much damage this Gastrodon is really going to be able to apply here. Yeah, absolutely. We know that it doesn't have something like an Ice Beam because we've seen its full moveset, so it's just going to be Earth Power. What this boils down to is can Paul wake up fast enough? Can he avoid uh, maybe, you know, Earth Power special defense drops here as well? Venusaur is going to take its first turn of sleep, so can wake up starting the next turn. Here's going to be the first out of Earth Power. How much does it do? A decent Ooh. chunk of damage, but it's still going to take a couple of more hits to really pick up this KO. Man, I am... <laughs> I mean, if you're Paul here, you're sitting here just praying to wake up, and on Marco's side, just praying that it stays asleep. Oh, it stays asleep? Okay. Second turn to sleep here, another Earth Power. Of course, not going to be picking up the KO, but Marco just needs one more turn of sleep here to be sealing this game up. Oh, it all comes down to this. Venusaur needs to wake up on this final turn. Does it take a third turn of sleep? It does! Oh, no. Marco able to hit a third Earth Power into that Venusaur and pick up that victory. I mean, I feel like it's not every day that you see Gastrodon go 1v1 versus a grass type and pull out a win, but Marco played that so well. Being able to get that yawn, being able to isolate it, put it to sleep, and just chip away at it until finally picking up that KO and getting the game. That was wild. I mean, I want to give both players props there because I, I thought Paul was making like safe and consistent plays up until maybe like the last two or three turns. And even in those turns, it's not like he, it looked like he had an early lead, right? But the reality is that Marco made just really, really good predictions to keep himself in this game. Marco recognized, hey, I'm kind of behind in this match. So I kind of need to just kind of play out of my mind and make the right calls and hopefully just read into Paul's soul, right? And so that, that's what he was able to do, right? Making the correct earth power onto the Reggie Alecki switching, getting that out of the way. Uh, calling that the uh, Venusaur was going to go for the Weather Ball on Sasashi and correctly uh, getting that Scald or uh, getting the Earth Power to knock out the Groudon and forcing it to be a 2v1 situation. In the end, yeah, Marco needed to get, you know, fortunate with sleep turns there to win the game, but he also, you know, fought really hard to even put himself in a position to uh, where that was relevant, right? Because I think in a lot of different outcomes, Marco wouldn't even have a chance to win this game with that late game Venusaur. So he definitely fought to his outs there. I think Paul honestly did a good job as well. He, you know, had an early lead and uh, uh, in the end, you know, he wins that game the majority of the time. Uh, but wow, what a doozy. I mean, that was just absolutely wild. Sometimes you just need a little bit of luck going your way. And like you said, Marco did what he could to position himself into that end game to where he could use that luck to seal off a win. But without any further ado, let's get into game two to see, see what these players can do. All right, heading into this game two here, Marco starting with that Gastrodon next to the Incineroar, Reggie Alecki and Charizard coming out on Paul's side of the field. Yeah, so definitely some adjustments here on both ends. Uh, you know, Marco actually leading Gastrodon despite Paul leading Venusaur last time. So I think Marco actually getting the better end of the trade-off in terms of the lead matchup here. Charizard's a pretty interesting adjustment here because we know that that Gastron has Yawn. Yawn is really, really good against Paul's team because, you know, Paul really wants to just overwhelm with this Dynamax damage in the early game. And you can see here, Paul's actually going for that max Airstream onto Incineroar. So if Gastron decides here to just go for a Yawn onto Charizard, uh, it will give Marco some good early game positioning. Anytime you get a Yawn off against, uh, you know, anything that's Dynamaxing, it's a great start. Of course, Reggie Alecki swapping out for that ground on as Paul is going for that max Charizard. Setting the sun as well, so Charizard will be doing extra damage here with that solar power ability on top of the light orb that it already has here. So let's see, does Gastron protect? It doesn't! Wow, okay. Big airstream coming out from the charger onto the Incineroar. Incineroar holding on with just a little bit of health here. I feel like Incineroar can almost survive any hit once. <laughs> just, just barely clinging on and is going to get that berry to get a bit of health back. Yeah, unbelievable survival there. Even gets the party shot off into Groudon. That's absolutely huge because we know this is a Swords Dance Groudon set. So able to switch out. And if that Gastron actually went for that Yawn onto Charizard, that is a great turn one for Marco. He needs to basically weather the early storm or early sun, I should say, in this matchup. <laughs> and so able to get that, uh, you know, positioning out 
Uh, Psycho that instant back in for future fake outs and intimidates is really valuable as well. Uh, and so, you know, I think Paul there didn't go for that max airstream onto, uh, onto Gastron because he was expecting Gastron to protect, right? One approach you can see Marco taking in this game is protecting Gastron on turn one and then switching out into Thunderous on turn two so that Gastron just doesn't take any damage from max airstreams. But Marco makes a really aggressive prediction there uh, saying, I just don't think you're going to max airstream into the Gastron. Or perhaps Gastron is just really, really specially defensive and Marco is expecting to survive him max airstream there and it is going to be that yawn into that charizard so that is a huge yawn here i mean ball in ball's position now what do you want to be doing with that charizard yeah that is such a good question i mean the reality is that like the residual effect from gmax wildfire is so strong that i think paul feels forced to basically stay in with the charizard go for that wildfire into that thunderous slot from marco's and you could easily switch that thunderous out back into incineroar that takes the wildfire gets another intimidate off against the groudon and it feels like a relatively safe switch so yeah looks like thunderous is gonna pull out that switch and it should be incineroar incineroar in the field yet again with the intimidate on to that ground on with the parting shot last turn and the intimate this turn definitely slowly be bringing it down here the charizard of course with that wildfire into it i mean didn't need to do too much damage to pick up that ko here either way incineroar is going to go down the gmax wildfire effect as you said is going to be doing a lot for him here upcoming turn brown on going for that sword stance trying to build back its attack stat after all of those stat drops and gastrodon just opting for the yawn into the ground on as well yeah these yawns are really really good for marco they're such a strong option right now and they're able to basically disrupt paul a lot right now and so that charizard is going to fall asleep right and that's already uh tough because you basically lose a turn of your max here uh in addition you have now put on pressure against groudon groudon got that sword stance off but that only puts it back at neutral anyway right so it's not actually doing that much damage and now marco is able to just dynamax and maybe overwhelm paul with offense right i uh, i think dynamax thunders is really strong especially because paul this time around isn't going to be able to dynamax that Groudon. Uh, Groudon here in a really tricky spot as well, right? Because uh, it, it's currently affected by Yawn. And so I, I really like how Marco played the first two turns. You know, a little bit risky, especially because maybe that Life Max Airstream could have just knocked out that Groudon, or sorry, the Gastron in the beginning of the match. But now Marco positioning himself to have multiple extra turns of Dynamax relative to Paul. And with that Zacian that he has in the back, I mean, all it takes is one speed boost onto that, and Zacian is really just going to, you know, uh, outspeed pretty much everything on Paul's end. And so, uh, great start to the game for Paul, or for Marco here, for sure. Charizard sleeping off that last turn of Dynamax here, as you said. Um, attack coming out from the ground is going to be picking up a little bit of chip, but that's all it is, is just a bit of chip here. As we see the max airstream hit into that Charizard, good amount of damage, as well as starting to get some speed boost on Marco's side of the field. Yeah, I mean, every speed boost is definitely critical here, and with the Gastron being able to just go for an Earth Power there, I mean, that covers for any switch out options, and, you know, Paul gets a little bit of damage off, sure, but uh, this Thunder is still has two turns of Dynamax, and this time around, you don't have something to just knock out it immediately the subsequent turn, right? So, yeah, I think Marco definitely in a much better spot than he was in that early game last time around, because he kind of has the Dynamax advantage, and once again, it's the Yawns that are so critical here. Paul really had no option with that Charizard slot, I mean... Maybe you can consider switching out, but Charizard at this point is not doing anything for Pulse. He basically wants Marco to actually pick up the knockout onto that. Now, both of Pulse Pokemon asleep. He's in definitely a, a tricky spot right now. I mean, you're hoping for Marco to kind of just knock you out and maybe give you free switch-ins. I'm actually kind of surprised that Paul's not withdrawing the uh, Groudon out here to maybe reconserve that weather. Uh, but he's going to be able to bring in that Zacian on Marco's end. And now Marco, you know, if you go for an Airstream there, that's exactly what you want, right? Give a speed boost onto that Zacian. Now you have a plus one attack Zacian uh, with that speed boost as well. And that looks really, really scary in this end game. Yeah, Zacian with that attack boost, with the, from its Tepid Sword, with that speed boost. I mean, it already hit so hard and being able to get just be so fast and so strong can really put a lot of pressure onto Paul here. The Charizard is going to get knocked out. Round on, of course, with its first turn of sleep. The Wildfire damage is going to be getting some chip onto Marco's side of the field here. And I'm interested to see what Paul is going to do to respond to this Asian here. Because this Asian is starting to look a little, a little scary. Definitely a little bit scary here. And getting a speed boost onto that is very, very critical as well. So let's see. I think that uh, 
This time around, I mean, yeah, Marco is just in a much better position. Uh, it does a really great switch out as well. It recognizes, hey, Gastron's not really going to do much for me at this point, so might as well get that speed boost and really get the ball rolling. So, and the main, uh, I think, tricky thing for this game uh, for Paul was that the yawns have just disrupted him so much, right? He felt pressure to stay in with both Pokemon, the turns that the yawns happen, but as a result, you know, you take a guaranteed turn to sleep afterwards, and now Paul is effectively, you know, playing like a 1v2 in these scenarios. So, it's just a really tough spot for him to be in, and I mean, if he doesn't get early wake-ups like with this brad on for example i don't really see how he comes back into this match to be honest other than maybe trying to crit thunders with like a thunderbolt for example but really tough spot for him to be in right now well i wouldn't really want to be counting on the early wake-ups considering what we saw in the end of the last game beijing is going to be going for that protect thunderous going with the max knuckle into the reggie Alecki, dealing about half of its health here but this is starting to get to be a really, really scary situation. Marco getting the attack boost on both of his Pokemon. The Zacian already had an attack boost already onto it from that Intipit Sword, as well the Airstream boost with these speed. And there's going to be some more Wildfire Chip onto Marco's side, but these Pokemon are just going to be so fast and so strong that even if they're slowly getting damage chipped away, I feel like they're in a position where they can just start to overpower all of Paul's Pokemon here. Overpower for sure, yeah. And I, I think the main thing here is just these speed boosts, right? You've kind of weathered the storm of Paul's Dynamax. You put yourself in a position now where you you can outspeed consistently. And, you know, it's not just taking damage, but it's not getting KO'd anytime soon right now. So, yeah, I think really, really outstanding play here from Marco to put himself in just a fantastic spot. And this Thunderous plus Zacian is just so difficult to deal with in this endgame because all Marco needs to do is exactly how he's playing this right now. Just go for safe plays. No need to risk anything. You've got in speed boost onto both your Pokemon, so outspeeding that Alecky is really, really critical. Uh, and now there's no need to even make any predictions, right? You know, Gradon was able to wake up, but uh, the question is, how much can it really offer at this point? Uh, Venusaur is the last one, but I mean, this is why I was kind of surprised Paul didn't switch out that Groudon earlier, because now you're in a really tricky spot where you can't get the sun up. And I think the explanation for why Paul maybe didn't switch out was because of the fact that uh, he didn't want to just switch in Venusaur and have that take any damage. But now Marco's just going to outspeed with both Pokemon on his end. Uh, you know the movesets on uh, both Pokemon, so you know that the Venusaur here can actually do very much other than maybe a Sleep Powder. Uh, and so Marco can, you know, safely double up into that slot as soon as Venusaur goes down, that should be game over. So Paul at this point is basically hoping for a mistake from Marco's end, hoping that for some reason Marco targets down the Groudon. But uh, yeah, looks like he's going to start this off with a wild charge into Venusaur. Picking up a little bit of chip here, also taking a bit of recoil damage. Vision going for that Behemoth Blade. This is going to be a huge attack here, dealing massive damage to that Venusaur. And sure enough, doubling into that slot, picks up that KO and... It's just this ground on against the world now, and I mean, I don't think it can really do too much. Paul recognizing that as well is just going to opt to back out of the game here, saying GG over to Marco. I think Marco played that really